I will talk about space. Space is one of my favourite sitcoms of all time, mainly for its portrayal of geeks in the 20 somethings genre, but also for going all out with its visuals, thanks to the brilliant writing from Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines and great direction by Edgar Wright. Even after 20 years of its release, it's still one of the most unique sitcoms to come out of the UK. Why is that? Sitcom's main focus is on relatability. Especially back in the day, sitcoms like Cheers, Four House and MASH were made because most of the people watching TV were in families, working or in war. That was just the life of an average adult back then. But as times changed, adults did too. And while there were still shows about workplaces and families, they started to go into a wide range of subgenres due to their demographic changing. This was because Gen X was starting to emerge. This was the generation that weren't getting married with children by the time they turned 20, and even fewer people thought that 9 to 5 jobs were fulfilling, which is why they were called the slacker generation. So obviously, networks wanted to make shows for this new generation of young adults. This led to a new genre of sitcom known as the 20 somethings genre, which focused more on people in their early to late 20s living in the city. The most successful show was NBC's Friends. It was about six adults living in New York as they navigate their careers and relationships. And while it wasn't groundbreaking writing wise, it simply had a comforting atmosphere. It was loved for its wacky characters, engaging storylines, and was relatable to this new young demographic of Gen X. But to be fair, Living Single did it first. The show became one of the most successful sitcoms of all time. And with that success, came studios trying to make the next friends. The UK tried joining in on the genre and of trying to relate to the youth at the time, but a lot of them were either copy and paste or were connecting with the audience they were trying to target. In fact, there was this whole thing called Youth TV, spelt Y O O F, but I'm not gonna go into that because this segment's here too long. Around this time, Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines were small comedy actors who frequently collaborated on a few small British comedy shows like Asylum. This was where they met soon to be great filmmaker Edgar Wright. They became kind of like the sort of the central kind of kind of uh, two characters of the show I suppose and um, and worked really well together and even though they'd done stuff together before I think kind of a lot of people were kind of watching it and saying oh those two are great together. Whilst working on the show Simon and Jess were given an opportunity by a producer to give them a show idea and looking at the state of 20 something sitcoms in the UK they felt as though they weren't speaking to them as people in their 20s saying shows like Game On and Babes in the Wood weren't written by people who were their age and were just poorly done versions of friends. So I'd been sort of living in various sort of states of squalor in London um, and doing various shitty jobs and um, sort of wanted to, to write something that reflected my experience. We were both really annoyed about the kind of state of sitcoms for 20-somethings which just all seemed to be about everyone chasing around shagging each other, using the word shag all the time. The two of them wanted to create a show that actually spoke to people like that. They wanted to create a show where the characters weren't just boring, conventionally attractive supermodels hanging out and shagging. They wanted to create a show that featured their experiences trying to navigate adulthood at the end of a millennia. And so they did. In fact, when pitching this show, their main influences were The Simpsons, Northern Exposure, and X-Files. I don't see it, but at the same time I do. Space Season 1 was released on Channel 4 in 1999. It was written by Simon and Jess and directed by Edgar Wright. It followed Tim, an aspiring comic artist who had just come out of a long-term relationship and is now homeless and Daisy, an aspiring journalist who is in a long distance relationship but is housewife, both being very desperate for a place to live in, decide to pretend to be a couple to get a flat. So, uh, how long have you been together? Uh, five, five years, eight, eight months, months, three days. days. <laughs> <laughs> the cast of characters include Brian, their mad artist neighbour, Mike, 
Tim's military obsessed best friend, Twist, Daisy's fashion obsessed best friend, Marsha, their landlady, and Colin, their dog. The first season was all written in one go, and you can tell at some points. The first two episodes could have been merged together and it would have been better pacing wise. But the imperfect parts of the show don't necessarily hinder the quality of the show. Most of the episodes just include the two mains doing as 20 somethings do, like hanging out in London, procrastinating, while also blaming their problems on capitalism. And sure, the premise might make it sound uneventful, but it's quite the opposite. One episode will be about going to a job interview, and another about playing paintball. One episode will have them going clubbing, and another about doing a rescue mission. From Edgar Wright's brilliant direction to the billions of movie references, the show is drastically different from your usual 20-something sitcom. In other words, Spaced is a 20-something sitcom, but with a nerdy and surrealist twist. It feels like an accurate portrayal of the slacker generation that shows like friends were missing. This was around the time where filmmakers like Kevin Smith were making films featuring these types of characters. They portrayed these geek characters as normal people while keeping that nerdy cynicism they all have. This leads me to talk about how Spaced handles its archetypes. The characters of Spaced all feel somewhat distinct in a way that isn't conventional to a sitcom. Your usual sitcom has a specific cast of character types you'd have in every sitcom like the straight man, the wisecracker, the goofball. Every sitcom character has to be written as a monolith so they can be distinguishable enough. Spaced writes their characters in this way, but what's different is that a lot of the characters' personalities are dictated by what their interests are or careers are. In other words, what you do is what you are. Artist. Writer. Uh, Mike. With Tim's character, he cares more about movies and video games and comics more than most things in his life. Mostly because he wants to get into comics, but he's overly cynical about most things in life like he is about Star Trek films. Brian is an abstract artist which makes him socially inept and emotional. Mike wants to get into the military, therefore he's overly masculine in almost a cartoony way. Same can be said with Twist, who's into fashion and is extremely feminine and is highly critical of people, and Marsha is a landlady, meaning she's fucking miserable. Although this doesn't apply to Daisy's character. This is because Daisy is the only character who hasn't really found herself yet. Being a journalist is something she wants to try out, but isn't something she's 100% passionate with, which leads her to procrastinate and do something else. At times she's more enthusiastic about other stuff in her real life than her work. She's quite extroverted but is also pretty socially awkward, kinda like Jess from New Girl. But instead of doing claps, I like to do a peck. Cause it's more realistic. No! This makes her and Tim's dynamic work so well. They're written quite like equals. They're both just as irresponsible as each other, but there still are differences in their personalities. Daisy is more open-minded and extroverted, while Tim is closed-minded and introverted. But when Daisy becomes averse to responsibility, Tim's there to remind her to focus on things that matter. Not that Tim is super responsible or anything. Uh, sorry, but um, I forgot to say some shit about Tim and his ex and stuff like I know it sounds like I'm just saying that 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 uh Daisy's the only one that's that's got some shit but yeah yeah his ex and his ex's new boyfriend was his new friend his old friend and shit yeah but by far the best dynamic in the show has got to be Tim and Mike's relationship every scene with these two are the best scenes of the show especially in the paintball episode this dynamic is good because Sam Pegg and Nick Frost. That's it. Space is one of those shows that goes into the style of a substance category, which isn't untrue, but it won't be doing the right justice to say that, especially with lines like, Do you think I should lose the waistcoat? I think you should burn it, because, you know, if you lose it, you might find it again. You know what they say about love and war? Yeah, one involves a lot of physical and psychological pain, and the other one's war. I've always fancied myself as a bit of a soldier. Yeah, I've always fancied myself. I've always fancied you. Not here. I think it would do that thing, you know, like in that film with um, Annie Dow and Gerald Deppard, you know, where they get married so that she can keep a house and he can get um, an American work permit. What, a green card? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? For Spaced, it's another case of style being the substance. Those influences I mentioned before don't really shine through as much in the final product, but you can still see why they were named. 
those shows weren't what you could consider sitcoms especially because they weren't multi-cam or filmed in front of a live audience neither were they grounded in realism for those that don't know most sitcoms are filmed with a multi-camera setup and switched between cameras with carefully blocked actors these shows are usually filmed in front of a live audience which is why they have that laugh track so you feel less lonely the problem that me and most people have with these laugh tracks is that it feels like it's forcing you to laugh at something no matter if it's funny or not. Sure most of them are actually filmed in front of a live audience and sure there are shows that have a laugh track that are still hilarious like Seinfeld but some just use the same kind of laughter and add it in post just to make every joke funny. Space was filmed on a single camera setup due to such a low budget but this didn't really feel like a restriction for the crew. The creators already wanted to make something that wasn't your usual sitcom. In fact, a single cam forces the director to be more creative visually and that's where a director like Edgar Wright shines. This is one of the first projects that really showcased how great his directing style is. The way he frames, the comedic timing, his direction on the show is goofy but in a charming way and I don't think the show would be the same without him. Did you guys know that, that Edgar Wright is, 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 a, is a good director? I don't think people make, make videos on that, definitely, definitely not. No, 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 no. It feels like this style of single cam sitcom had somewhat inspired some shows in the early 2000s. I've recently started watching Malcolm in the Middle which is really good not just writing wise but visual wise too. It has that same visual flair with its use of wide lenses and surrealist humour that Space had. So I wouldn't be surprised if the directors were inspired by this show. Probably not. But a very big thing about Spaced is the references. Whether it's in a normal dialogue scene, a quick callaway, every single minute of an episode has at least one reference to a show, movie or game. Most media pay homage to a specific old genre like how The Big Lebowski is a tribute to detective noir films but with stoners. Or you could pay tribute to a specific director like how The Joker is a tribute to Scorsese films, Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. Space will have a character in a random conversation then boom, reference. Random callway, boom, reference. The character reaction, boom, reference. And it's right behind him in the poster, where that? In this show, the homages are for the audience because we recognize these references, which adds to the surrealist tone. But it's there because it represents the way that these characters process things. Characters like Tim can't comprehend certain situations unless they're referencing Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever. Further adding to that, what you do is what you are point I made earlier. So if somebody's having a, uh, a, a set, for instance, a breakup with their girlfriend, they imagine it to have the same crushing kind of like, you kind of uh, feeling as the ending of Empire Strikes Back. Overall, I think Spaced is one of the best sitcoms, not only just from the UK, but just ever. It's different from a lot of sitcoms from this era, not just from its mundane yet surreal episodes, but more from its representation of a media obsessed generation. Which sounds weird considering present day. We've become more pop culture obsessed than we've ever been and love seeing a show that portrays geek culture with such respect and care. But honestly, you don't have to be a geek to really appreciate the show because the characters are written with care and honesty to where you could see yourself in any of the characters. Hell, I'm basically Daisy when it came to writing the script. But I know some people who could relate to Brian and his struggles with artistic expression and wondering if he's good enough. Or with Mike trying to get into the military with his physical disadvantages. Or with Tim's breakup with the Star Wars franchise. Stop saying stuff like that. You're not supposed to say that kind of stuff.